Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you and you and you and you and you. I am so happy to be coming at you live from my house. It's your girl, Miss Turner. Whoop whoo! Uh, and today we are going to continue reading The One and Only Ivan by Katherine Applegate. We are reading this book, but with permission from HarperCollins Publishers. If you remember, last time, you can always go back and watch the video, but last time, Ivan was discussing how not many people are visiting the zoo right now. AJ came up with the idea that people don't want to see lonely animals. That's a really good idea. So Ivan's plan to get more people to come to the zoo was to eat more. So we're going to hear why what Bob thinks about that. And Bob is the tiny little dog. I explained to I explained my plan to Bob. Ivan, he says, trust me on this one. The problem is not your appetite. He hops onto my chest and licks my chin, checking for leftovers. Bob is a stray, which means he does not have a permanent address. He is so speedy, so wily, that mall workers long ago gave up trying to catch him. Bob can sneak into cracks and crevices like a tracked rat. He lives well off the ends of hot dogs. He lives well off. Oh, okay. He lives well off the ends of hot dogs he pulls from the trash. For dessert, he laps up spilled lemonade and lemonade and splattered ice cream cones. I've tried to share my food with Bob, but he is a picky eater that says he prefers to hunt for himself. Bob is tiny, wiry, and fast, like a barking squirrel. He is nut colored and big eared. His tail moves like weeds in the wind, spiraling, dancing. Bob's tail makes me dizzy and confused. It has meanings within meanings, like human words. I am sad, it says. I am happy, it says. Beware, I may be tiny, but my teeth are sharp, it says. Gorillas don't have any use for tails. Our feelings are uncomplicated. Our rumps are unadorned. Bob used to have three brothers and two sisters. Humans tossed them out of a truck onto the freeway when they were a few weeks old. Bob rolled into a ditch. The others did not. And here's a little illustration of Bob. Illustrations are pictures in books that are drawn. His first night on the, ho on the highway, Bob slept in the icy mud of the ditch. When he woke, he was so cold that his legs would not bend for an hour. The next night, Bob slept under some dirty hay near the Big Top Mall garbage bins. The following night, Bob found the spot in the corner of my domain where the glass is broken. I dreamed that I'd eaten a furry donut, and when I woke in the dark, I discovered a tiny puppy snoring on top of my belly. It had been so long since I felt the comfort of another's warmth that I wasn't sure what to do. Not that I hadn't had visitors. Mac had been in my domain, of course, and many other keepers. I'd seen my share of rats zip past, and the occasional wayward sparrow had fluttered in through the hole in my ceiling. But they never stayed long. I didn't move all night for fear of waking Bob. Once I asked Bob why he didn't want a home, humans, I noticed, seemed to be irrationally fond of dogs. And I could see why a puppy would be easier to cuddle with than, say, a gorilla. Everywhere is my home, Bob answered. I am a wild beast, my friend, untamed and undaunted. I told Bob he could work in the shows like Snickers, the poodle who rides Stella, who remembers Stella's the elephant. Bob said Snickers sleeps on a pink pillow in Mac's office. He said she eats foul smelling meat from a can. He made a face. His lips curled, revealing tiny needles of teeth. Poodles, he said, are parasites. And I would agree with that. I like my dogs really big. Poodles are really fluffy and tiny. Give me a Newfoundland any, any day. Picasso. Mac gave me a fresh crayon, a yellow one, and ten pieces of paper. Time to earn your keep, Picasso, he mutters. I wonder who this Picasso is. Does he have a tire swing like me? Does he ever eat his crayons? 
I know I have lost my magic, so I try my very best. I clutch the crayons and think, I scan my domain. What is yellow? A banana. I draw a banana. The paper tears, but only a little. I lean back and Mac picks up the drawing. Another day, another scribble, he says. One down, nine to go. What else is yellow? I wonder, scanning my domain. I draw another banana and then I draw eight more. Three visitors are here. A woman, a boy, a girl. I strut across my domain for them. I dangle from the tire swing. I eat three banana peels in a row. The boy spits at my window. The girl throws a handful of pe pebbles. Sometimes I'm glad the glass is there. Now, how should we act if we go to a zoo? Should we be spitting at the animals and throwing pebbles? No, you're right, Melina. We definitely should not. After the show, the spit pebble children come back. I display my impressive teeth. I splash in my filthy pool. I grunt and hoot. I eat and eat and eat some more. The children pound their pathetic chests. They toss more pebbles. Slimy chimps, I mum mutter. I throw a me ball at them. Sometimes I wish the glass were not there. Who remembers what a me ball is? Yeah, you're right. I see her. It's a poop ball. <sighs> I'm sorry I called those children slimy chimps. My mother would be ashamed of me. So he got angry and he threw something back at them and he uh, called them names. Is that appropriate response when you're angry at somebody? William? No, it's not. So I want you guys to think about what you can do instead if you're angry at someone. Like the spit pebble children, Julia is a child, but that, after all, is not her fault. While her father, George, cleans the mall each night, Julia sits by my domain. She could sit anywhere she wants, by the carousel, in the empty food court, on the bleachers coated in sawdust. But I'm not bragging when I say that she always chooses to sit with me. I think it's because we both love to draw. Sarah, Julia's mother, used to help clean them all. But when she got sick and grew pale and stooped, Sarah stopped coming. Every night, Julia offers to help George, and every night he says firmly, Homework, Julia. The floors will just get dirty again. Homework, I have discovered, involves a sharp pencil and thick books and long sighs. I enjoy chewing pencils. I am sure I would excel at homework. Sometimes Julia dozes off, and sometimes she reads her books, but mostly she draws pictures and talks about her day. I don't know why people talk to me, but they often do. Perhaps it's because they think I can't understand them, or perhaps it's because I can't talk back. Julia likes science and art. She doesn't like Leela Burpee, who teases her because her clothes are old, and she does like Deshaun Williams, who teases her too, but in a nice way. And she would like to be a famous artist when she grows up. Sometimes Julia draws me. I am an elegant fellow in her pictures, with my silver back gleaming like the moon on moss. I never look angry, the way I do on the fading billboards by the hallway, by the highway. I always look a bit sad though. All right, guys, we're going to stop it right there. We will pick back up on page 46. My questions for you today are, one, if somebody is treating you badly, like throwing pebbles at you and spitting on you, uh, what can you do instead of uh, throwing a me ball and calling them names back? Is there a different way you could handle that? And my other question to ask you guys, let's see, what should I ask? Do, 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 do. Why do you think Bob would prefer to stay astray than live with humans? I think if you go back, it kind of, the book kind of explains this one. But I'm looking to see if you guys have a different take. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's reading. I miss you with all of my person. And we will be together soon. All right. Love you guys. See you later.